How's that for some spooky music? It sounds more like we're waiting to talk to St. Peter. Right. Right, right. Or in line for a massage. Do you get yeah. in line for a massage? Is that how that works? Depends Usually on you make what, an appointment. I mean, it really depends on the establishments you frequent. The establishment. Yeah. Sure, right. yeah. Yeah. I generally like to um, go to the. Uh, I like when my lines are being managed by carnies. That's when I know mm-hmm. that I'm in the right yeah. massage line. Um, do you even hear that music? Am I just going? Not no, anymore. It's very faint. Very faint. Well, hey, listen, you know what it is. It's Moo Mammo. And what is Moo Mammo without some flipping audio problems? So <laughs> <laughs> that's no. what we're dealing with today. On, uh, on today's episode, Troy is at the end of his leash and ready to snap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, there's nothing, nothing better for a uh, for a live um, broadcast than to just get just so infuriated, right? You. Yeah, but not- Troy is a disembodied being on the edge. I am on the edge. I'm on all the edges right now. He's a loose uh, cannon cloud. Mm-hmm. Or a non happy spooky month to you, uh, Jahan says. Yes. Mutants and masterminds, what a value! Mutants and masterminds in this economy. <laughs> A book says good evening, super fam. Yeah, yeah. Today and the we're going to says, discuss whether we're oh, yeah. going to keep the mutants or the masterminds because we uh, cannot uh, afford uh, both. Uh, I'm sorry. Nope. Mm. Wow. Yeah, one will go to a nice farm upstate. Oh yeah. I thought we keep the mutants because the masterminds are always scheming. Yeah, that's a hard one. Um, hey, uh, let's see. Coming out of his cage, intro has been doing just fine. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Hello, Dominic. Um, you know, I'm going to do this. The The thing that I, like I was saying earlier, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm a little frustrated. I'm a little, I, I've had a, some technical things um, that, uh, you know, but it is not the fault of, by any stretch, my friends who are hanging out right here. Got Alex and Steve and a crystal and, um, and we're having some fun today. I'm really excited about it, actually, because I'm always excited about our shows. But I've got some stuff today. Yay. Yeah, I've got some things to share. Oh, is, is it your deepest, darkest phobias? It is. It's sort of. I mean, you know, I don't really have... My phobia is like, I don't know, uh, getting old. So, yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's all the phobia. Congratulations. You are engaging with that phobia one second at a time. That's right. Mm-hmm. I'm in the <laughs> slowest, saddest time machine. Um, Very let's slow see. exposure therapy. Exactly. Right. <laughs> uh, that's right. Uh, Sean, good to see you and uh, Claude, you as well. Uh, so let me tell you a story. Uh, I'm going to try to make this brief. When we decided that we were going to open the doors and say, hey, friends, mm-hmm. why don't you tell us about your character? Like, join us. Come into the studio. We will uh, set up the green room like a palace. We, didn't, we, we will didn't have say we were going to discuss my fears. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, and so we brought two guests in. Mm-hmm. And I will tell you what. It was a joy. Now, it was also problematic in that if you could imagine, I couldn't stop talking with them. And so rather than 15 minutes, you? Minutes, yeah, I know, what? right? Oh, well, they were just so good. They were just so great. It was really a lot of fun. It was very interesting. And you know me, I'm dumb and I like to learn some stuff. And, and they were teaching. And so it was really a lot of fun. Um, we had uh, Oranon and Dominic in. Awesome. And they shared their, um, their two characters. Now, listen, I don't know how to do this. Should I play that at the end of our program today as we go out and uh, and sort of let it broadcast? Or should we, it's, you know, they're just not a good place to cut it, um, mm-hmm. to make it two pieces. And so, or should I, we, how do, should we do it? Go ahead. Yeah, I think we should probably do that as a, a wrap up at the end. Yeah. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Makes and we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll be absolved of our um, responsibility to stick around because it's an hour. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, we really shouldn't do it now, then, because that'll take yeah. up the whole show. <laughs> right. We don't want to do that, right? Because we're talking about... I've got, I've got a lot to do today. <laughs> we're talking about playing with fear. I've got one more thing that I want to share. Um, there mm-hmm. is a uh, there's a big thing going on right now, and it is uh, a good thing. Which one? <laughs> yeah, right. 
<laughs> it's the good one. It, this is the good one. So here's the deal. Um, I, I, uh, we've got our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash mutants, A-N-D, mastermind. And uh, no worries, Pope. You get that email to me when you can. Uh, we've got some other folks. I believe that Claude's in line. Uh, RC, we're expecting you get in line. We want to talk to you about some stuff. So, yeah, get that over here um, and talk to Oren on. Get the show out there. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, Dominic said it was great. Um, so here's what we're doing. See, Troy only keeps a couple of teeth. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that's all I need. Um, but uh, so as part of the Patreon. Mm-hmm. I also started to uh, facilitate a group of uh, tabletop role play creators in the Patreon space. Mm-hmm. About 60 people on there. And uh, wow. we meet every Tuesday, and it's just a heck of a lot of fun. And I had this idea about, oh, it was, you know, in the summer, about doing a Halloween event mm-hmm. where there's sort of a, a sort of a trick or treating kind of a deal. And you go from Patreon to Patreon, and you collect a free thing, and then you move along. And um, with each treat that you get, a piece of your soul is locked in the gem, and that no, you actually get all this great free mm-hmm. stuff. And we give out stuff too for uh, the Twilight Accord, for Mutants Masterminds, um, mm-hmm. and all you have to do to get involved because they're all public free things you can just download. Um, I actually want to show um, the video. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to um, share the screen and then we'll jump into the topic because I don't want to take up too much of everybody's time. I mean, I really do, but uh, <laughs> here we go. So this is the all treats, no tricks uh, TTRPG Patreon creators, a club thing. That's a lot of words. But yeah. No just, tricks? Whack. Well, what just kind you of Halloween wait. is this? It is a very long monitor Halloween. Um, <laughs> you are all squoze and uh, apologies for that. Um, uh, so, yeah, you, so you head over to the Patreon. I'll drop a link. Um, uh, again, that's, you know, patreon.com slash mutants and the masterminds. I just happen to be starting at, a, uh, at one of our friends uh, here. This is uh, beyond the screen. And um, so you click on this and it takes you to the next Patreon where there are more treats, mm-hmm. and you just keep on clicking. Look at that. That's fun. Isn't that fun? You mm-hmm. can't really even see it, can you? Um, right. Let me get this a little bigger. Uh, but <laughs> the idea is everybody gets a little exposure. Everybody gets a little love. Everybody. So do me a favor, friends. You don't have to be a part of the Patreon. You don't have to be um, uh, uh, you know, a subscriber. You get all this stuff that we're giving out uh, for free. And uh, look at this. This is amazing. Okay, so this is a uh, this is Ooh, a compendium. compendium. Look at the Ooh. art on this. Who doesn't love a good compendium? I Absolutely. love a good compendium. Who doesn't I mean, love a good zombie waltz? Right? Look at that. Isn't that amazing? I mean, it is just, it is. I mean, that dip. Really? Right? To die for. Tasha's got uh, moves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Who for knew? real. There's a compendium Tasha's for it. Tasha's uh, uh, hideous boogie. Right. <laughs> I love this. Oikso is a great artist. Um, and uh, what they've provided here is a Foundry VTT module link. And this is um, with some stats and all kinds of stuff. And I can click through all this, but it is just too much. There's just too many things here. I love this. So artist. you will sum up. I will sum up by saying, get your butt over there and start clicking around and get some free stuff. And uh, it, it is really like there's one one of the creators put together 100 monsters. Wow. Oh, wow. I mean, it, it is just, and it's all really, really well quite done. Quite a freebie. Yeah, yeah that's a, a small treat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, there's some some of the creators oh. are brand new, or some of them are mm-hmm. building their, their uh, world, but, um, <laughs> Pope, don't you tell me what to do with my butt. Um, but, uh, you know, I, it's just a really great thing, and it's come together really well. Uh, spread the word, share the love. Well, I think we're going to try to put up a blog post here pretty soon but um it is just this crowd is just amazing and uh you know so big shout out to patreon and they're you know putting these a clubs the a stands for accountability (laughs) it really does that's corny (laughs) but um there's that i also want to remind everybody that um we're getting close to that mega bundle going Mm -hmm. goodbye so you want to be sure to get grab that because it's going to go up in price i can't tell you how much? Can't but, say this cheap forever. 
Yeah, yeah and it's not going to be as expensive as it were if you were buying it in what the 1970s when we were first launched this. Um, but uh, well, it, I mean, back then we had to hand crank all our PDFs. So right, they were a lot we more did. expensive. They were much more expensive. Yeah. yeah, I used yeah. to cry a lot more back then too. That's because you were an infant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to save some of the other stuff uh, for later in the program. Um, and with that being said, playing with fear, mm -hmm. what are we talking about? I'm terrified. Oh, it's just. A Wait a minute, Troy. Did you really say tabletop trauma isn't fun in the post about this? That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Alex's you definition of fun. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Alex well, loves traumatizing people. It's very fun for him. You know, it is fun for him, but, you know, Alex, you manage to do it in a way that leaves no residual emotional sort of, uh, you know. I mean, it's 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 a fun trauma. It, does. <laughs> it is a fun trauma. I don't know that I agree that people don't come away changed from the experience, but mm -hmm. that's true. That's you're true. not taking enough blood. Yeah, you do. You probably yeah. Are, are they are they pure? Are, you giving, are yeah. you giving the blood back at the end? Because that's a common problem. Mm. Mm. Are that's you mixing fault. it? If you do, yeah, that's probably weird. Um, okay, let's talk about it. Scary stuff. Yeah. yeah, fear is just a really common element that people play with in superhero stories because mm -hmm. most superhero stories are all about empowerment, and fear is sort of the opposite of that. It's taking mm -hmm. away people's power and making them feel helpless in the face of something. So mm -hmm. it's really fun to put heroes in situations where they've got to face these these powerless moments in their lives. Right. Uh, so it's why you have things like you know Peter haunted by the deaths of people in his life. It's why you know Batman is get. You know, haunted by both by you know the loss of his parents and also by all of the things he's afraid of and why he's got an entire villain dedicated to fear mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and sometimes it is just fun to break out like weird surreal scenarios and fear gas is the go-to because we all grew up on batman the animated series mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah true true so the trick with superheroes is how one how do you scare superheroes who have all of these amazing powers and for the purposes of a tabletop game how do you make that fun mm -hmm. uh, for me I've, personally a lot of jump scares right <laughs> jump scares aren't scary i mm -hmm. mean jump scares are startling setting, we should say that setting a mood at your table is really really helpful for this setting up spooky mm -hmm. music and turning down the lights and you know using flickering candles or flickering leds to sort of set up a mood can really run the bath have some rose petals <laughs> setting the wrong mood setting, troy yeah oh. that's not the kind of i mean yes that will that will scare your players troy <laughs> <laughs> but not not really in the way you want i don't think i signed up for this event yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, the interactive scrub Troy's back experience. Yeah, anything that, anything that will lead your players to call HR is probably, you yeah. know, not the kind They're of scary. Everybody just rolls a D20 across my back at the same time. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you know, your voice, your tone as the GM sets a lot of that mood, too. So being able to speak in sort of a stilted, thoughtful, evenly paced stage whisper... And the ability to jump from almost no emotion to absolute rage. Oh that was good. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's yeah. a fair point. That's a very fair point. The, there's a lot you can do with the theater, just your voice. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes down to you know the practical mechanics, uh, there's a lot of different tricks. The, the obvious one is we have complications. So if you play mm -hmm. your character being afraid of cats, I'll give you a hero point. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you're up against a cat-themed villain, so you're going to be... You know, you got to make a will check every round or be dazed that round. Uh, I mean, that's that's the basics. The thing I like to do in any of my systems is if somebody's afraid of something and facing it, that, that terrifying thing gets bonuses against them. Mm. Howdy, howdy, friend. So, you know, if you're afraid of cats and you're fighting a cat-themed villain, that cat gets, you know, maybe a plus two to attack and damage against you specifically or... 
plus five if I really want to be mean. Um, right. If you haven't done any of the work to deal with your therapy, then yeah, maybe it's really high. But, you know, <laughs> you make these objects of phobia like actually more dangerous for them specifically. Dominic uh, actually brings up actually like wow Dominic said something really great finally no I'm kidding um, uh, says there are two ways to tackle fear in superheroes either reminding characters who used to not have powers what it's like to be powerless or taking always powerful characters from their power or the third an already powerless character getting to stand up to that horror or the fourth screaming goo in their face yeah I love that mm -hmm. people Ooh. do like screaming goo in the face right wait Topic. There, <laughs> there is a lot to be said for presenting situations where the character's tremendous power is really of no use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things like ghosts or mm -hmm. you know, psychic planes or things like that are very useful because you can have you can have things that are either completely immune to their powers or feed off their powers. Mm -hmm. uh, I like and I love I love getting the players involved in it. So when they're coming up with their characters, or I know there's a scene coming, or there is an adventure coming up that's going to tap into stuff that's horrifying for them. I ask them, "What scares your character? What bad things have happened to you that you want to engage with in this sort of weird psychoscape? This, you know, what would your worst hallucination be to bring them into it and get them invested in what's going to mm -hmm. happen?" Yeah. I dig it. Uh, I want to test something here real quick because we're talking about ambiance. It's kind of setting the mood. Um, <laughs> Did you hear that? That yes. was Wilhelm. That's, that's it was a Wilhelm. That's absolutely right. Fear. That's like a a scream of being stabbed or falling off a bridge or falling off a yeah really mm -hmm. yeah uh, um, well so what, the reason I'm, I'm sharing this is that we are using Sirenscape or mm -hmm. some audio and I I shudder to actually push any of these buttons because every time that happens something happens I don't know what someone gets ejected oh, into space something bad happens but I'm gonna play this real fast. I don't really hear anything. Oh. Oh, I hear thunder. Mm -hmm. Rolling thunder. Okay. Right. Some violent lightning. Really so they've got their lightning. new, they've got their new uh, player that, uh, no, stop. No, stop. <laughs> no, really. I keep hitting it and then I, I'm resetting it. So we're just going to turn it down. Um, but uh, they've got their new desktop player that it will play right into your um, uh, your VTT game, which is nice. super, super fun. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that would help a lot. Yeah. There better Are be one good Baba Booey on that soundboard. There is not, <laughs> sir. Yeah, but I know where this is going by the end of uh, the end of the show today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Um <laughs> Uh, David Wade says, yes, I like the idea of slowly allowing the baddies to become immune to the player's powers the longer they face off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like we were saying earlier, the the powerlessness or, or feeling powerless, at least, is a big part of uh, a big part of instilling some fear. And it's not just about taking away superpowers. It might be uh, you can make them feel powerless by uh, having it increasingly difficult for their characters to tell what's real and what isn't. So they might mm -hmm. be seeing things that are attacking them that nobody else can see, or, you know, they may, they may see the wrong faces on the wrong people. They might see their allies as villains or, mm -hmm. you know, innocent right. bystanders as villains and just go all out to, to try and defeat them only to find out afterwards. I just put somebody in the hospital. I'm right, haunted by the by the ghosts mm -hmm. of their past loves or something, mm -hmm. or, or you know. Be sure. Careful with that one because that's a scenario where you're really screwing with a person's a character's mind and their Fair, you know, yeah. their, their reputation. Their yep. Mm -hmm. their but goals, one of the other great of. things about superhero settings is that uh, oh. you can also play around with the the ability to undo things. Um, and, you know, a lot of uh, horror scenarios in superhero comics are things that either, you know, turn out to be dreams or nightmares, mm -hmm. or they're just reality alterations that can be undone in some way. So if you can defeat the villain who has transformed the city into a, you know, the ninth circle of hell then, you know, everything goes back to the way it was and all of the horrible things 
that the heroes experienced are just, you know, trauma that they have to process and nobody else does. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of the you're in my world now trope where yeah. the characters yeah. are in another world and then they finally realize, wait, this is my dream. I have the power here. And they turn it on the villain. Claude mm-hmm. said something like that. here that, that uh, was um, impressively cogent. Um, the increasing their powers at the cost of control. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. very interesting. I think. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't know why I flashed to like Scott Summers and like losing the visor and you know sort sure. of. Sure. It's a common Cyclops nightmare. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And it's, um, that's it's fun to play with as a GM. Sometimes it's fun for the player too. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm in a horror game right now with a character who's actually incredibly powerful, but she doesn't have great control. So when it gets out, she'll wreck up everything around her. Hmm. Yeah, I love that. I absolutely do. Um, okay, so so we've kind of covered, I mean, at least obliquely, we've talked a little bit about, like, you know, you want to make sure you're checking in with your table and do you know, like, do the due diligence. Don't be introducing spiders when you haven't shared that you're going to. And, you know, that's it, not that kind of trauma is yeah. what we're doing. This is one time, one time I ran a horror game that was called Arachnophobia. <laughs> And a lady sat down at the table and she said, we can't even say the word spider in my house, but I still want to play this game. Can you call all the spiders sandwiches for the scenario? <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes it worse. Right? The sandwich skitters towards you, you? and sinks its fangs into your flesh? <laughs> yeah. Right. I obliged because she paid for the event ticket, but I was like, why right? did you sign up for this? It says spiders in the description. Webs overhead are full of sandwiches. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's been drained of all his fluid there's a bark on his neck that indicates the bite of a sandwich a sandwich a sandwich, <gasps> a sandwich oh, man. man sandwich man I like that <laughs> right uh, okay well so there you go um, that uh, I can't stop thinking about the, the sandwich thing like that that seems very uh, now I'm terrified right. of sandwiches <laughs> um yeah, I mean, we've talked before at great length about safety tools and we have yeah. with players. Mm-hmm. If you're going to do horror games or just a horror adventure, it's a good idea to go in knowing, like, you know, what's everybody's major damage, or at least knowing, like, we have a system for people to check out and be like, right. I mean, back in the early days of gaming, you'd game with the same group pretty much exclusively, and so if somebody had damage, you generally knew about it. Whether or not you cared or your GM cared was a whole different thing, but, you know. Yeah, yeah it's good to check in, or at yeah. the very least ensure yeah. that the players have some, you know, an, a safe, you know, an out if, yeah. if things are, you know, getting too real. Different. And so we've done our, yeah, so we've done our due diligence. We, we, yeah. I was going to say, there are different ways to play horror games. There's definitely the version where you're engaging the you know, on some level, the player's emotions. That's where you're lowering mm-hmm. the lights, talking with an eerie sort of GM voice. Yep. Like, the player's not in any danger, and they know that, but you're still kind of creating this sense of dread that makes the mm-hmm. tension chill more. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. there's the sort of fear, you know, playing with fears where everybody knows it's a, it's a superhero game, but the fears are real to your character, so mm-hmm. they might they might be only affected by psychic magic or you know fear toxins or something like that. But the giant spiders they have to fight are real as far as the character is concerned. It is yeah. a fight just like it would be right. with any other NPC. Right, because it's an imaginary thing happening within the context of your imaginary game. Yeah. Right. So. So you can just treat any kind of fear controller character like a summoner who basically makes their nightmares real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If your players are good at improv, um, then Mm -hmm. horror games can be great for, you know, what essentially amounts to telling each other ghost stories. Um, Yeah. Because you can, you can simply cue the players with things like, okay, your character's worst fear manifests. Tell us what that looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And let them spin out what that scenario is for everybody. Yeah, and this this time of year, especially if you've never played a horror role playing game, I strongly recommend Dread or Ten mm. Candles because they are both amazing. They really, the mechanics of the game sort of build into the idea of tension, 
where mm -hmm. with dread you play it with a Jenga tower instead of dice and you're you're pulling pieces off the Jenga tower to get successes for tasks you're trying to do. I want so, to play Dread so bad. I've never had the chance to. Everything you want to do is, you know, adds to the tension, not just for the moment, but for the rest of the game. Right. And it's it's just lovely. And then for 10 candles, it's a similar idea, except you have 10 tea candles in a dark room, and that's your only light for the game. And every time you need to do something that requires a success, you blow out a candle. Candle. Hey, real quick, I wanted to say, everybody in chat, your sandwich game is on point today. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> we knew we could count on you. We knew it. Yeah, we absolutely knew it. Yeah, at some point we lost a little like pop up here. The little uh, the chat pop up. I think oh, Troy does that manually. Troy does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, look, we found it. <laughs> BLT. The T is tarantula. <laughs> <laughs> Black Forest uh, Widow. Uh -huh. I like it. This is a good one too. Oh. The Rye of Law. <laughs> yep. Demon Queen of Sandwiches. Yep. Love Those writers it, love are it. the scariest. Oh, yeah, I gotta no. say, I think I'm gonna walk away from this particular broadcast with a fear of sandwiches. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly. What what do they call that? Uh, That's a good question. Yeah. Send a what is this? I guess. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to look that up. There must, be, there must be something. I don't think there's a Greek word for sandwich. Right? Uh, cyberphobia, cyberphobia is the fear of food. Mm, but okay. there's not one that specifically is sandwiches. sandwiches. Yeah, I'm not afraid you of all put... food. I'm just afraid of, like, skittering things between two slices of bread. bread. <laughs> it's a very specific fear. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to, like, take a bite and have, a, like, a big mouthful of mommy long legs. <sighs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing entirely. That's an entirely yeah, that's different the bingo thing. card. Right. Yeah, yeah, folks, if anybody out there, Hannah Christmas. Later, we're going to have yeah. to stat her up. <laughs> I guess we it's have. a good time of year for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I True. mean, we've got the... It's a suggested name for the jobber in the Telex Game Master's Guide, so mm. you've got well, the staff block for Mommy Long Legs already. Oh, right, yeah. effectively. You gotta make that. I, I I don't know why that made me laugh so hard. I still laugh about it. I just it just cracks me up. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. Uh, it's right up there with oh, Lady Stilt Man. Yeah. Lady, Lady what? Man. Lady yeah. Stilt Man. Lady Stilt Man. There's a, there's a Marvel <laughs> villain named Stilt Man. His his power is he has a robotic suit with extendable legs, right. so he he can rob places on like the second floor. Uh, and a woman got a hold of his armor and started calling herself Lady Stilt Man. Oh my! It's because why wouldn't woman. yeah? yeah. You come a long leg, baby. Okay, let's see here. Uh, John says perhaps the next Omniversal Rules variant on the Patreon should tackle horror tweaks. Yeah, I mean, mm. sure. Well, I mean, mm. we've got the Supernatural Handbook, Indeed. which has a Quite very a good that. chapter on specifically horror and horror gaming and what makes horror scary. And also, it's got a really great monster builder that I steal from all the time for my home mm -hmm. games. True. I like it. That's a good book. Mm -hmm. Well, so, you know, here's uh, what I love about just the, the this conversation in general is, you know, these things are very context important, right? Like, you know, that mood that you get and you kind of are, are kind of taken away by the either the enthusiasm or the lack of or the reaction and you kind of tune mm -hmm. it and you do all that kind of stuff. And that's a hard thing mm -hmm. to teach. But what are some of the. I guess for me, I feel like some people are, yes, I want that genre. I want to do that thing that we'd done, you know, a hundred times because it reminds me of my, you know, when we had fun that one time and we all were monkeys or whatever. Um, um, yeah. Is there anything new under the sun? I mean, there's, there's all kinds of things you can do. One of the, I mean, one of the easier ones is take away some element of the game your players take for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So with mutants and masterminds, uh, healing between scenes is pretty much instant and automatic. Mm -hmm. uh, so don't let that happen. Players don't recover from conditions, don't heal their bruises in between fights. So every time they go into a fight, they're going to come out a little worse than they were last time. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to build up more and more. You know, maybe they'll shake off dazed after after a round maybe they shake off something like stunned at the end of the combat but you know all the damage they've accrued just sticks around until they find mm -hmm. the source and end it ah interesting i like mm -hmm. that yeah 
you know, yeah. I mean, Crystal's example of her actual play with Bowman operating under a curse mm -hmm. is a great example of, you know, how you can have the characters effect players effectively play lower level characters, um, you know, who are just less lesser versions of their usual selves because their abilities are limited in some way. Yeah. And you want to be careful just calling it a penalty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody's just walking around with a penalty to everything they do, but starts to feel like anything is useless. Right. But if you right. give them a different character sheet or you bump up the challenge on all of the villains they face, then they're still the same, but their fear is making their problems mm -hmm. worse. I've talked about this before, but one time I took away the letter M. That's right, I remember that. <laughs> so any power that had M in it didn't work. Didn't for work. Anybody. <laughs> Which is really bad for the mentalists and the magic users and the armor characters. Mm. And... Yeah. Well, I'll leave it to you, I my friend. I my blast. Right. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Also works to take away... I mean, Alex has a great example of, you know, just take away powers at random or, mm -hmm. you know, tinker with the meta a little so that, you know, all of a sudden players can't use their maxed out dodge defense for every encounter suddenly for some reason they don't know why they have to use their will defense to avoid ranged attacks mm -hmm. maybe it's because mm -hmm. the attacks the attacks are cloaked in all of these fear illusions right so the only way but to like, really dodge is to be you know focused and on your game did people with the with the name that had an m just disappear rc wants to know yeah what did happen to them mm -hmm. oh poor emily I yeah think about that <laughs> Did Michael did. turn into Eichel? Right. We Malcolm. never did well, find the mimes. That is how everybody did. They were they just removed M from the words they were saying out loud. So, like, so if you like wanted your mom, you're just like, oh, <laughs> oi, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's scary. Um, yeah, they were fighting Dians was the problem. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> That does make I'm, sense. I'm definitely going to have to steal that idea at some point. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> Back, Back, in the days when still missing. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day when there were forums, we used to take away people's vowels. Um, it yeah. was very, very mm -hmm. fun. And you can play around with a lot of weird expectations when it comes to horror adventures. You can do the you know, scenario where the players you hand the players characters who are basically kids dressed up as them for halloween um and it they it was adventures. them all along and they right and they encounter a horror scenario and they find out they actually are the superheroes but they're in a nightmare scenario that has you know rendered them into powerless kids and they have to really believe in themselves as heroes you know in order to you know overcome it yeah and you, you can, can do all kinds of things that or you know track it mechanically depending on what works better for your group you have to have right. you can always just say like you have to accumulate like you have to spend five hero points to unlock your powers right. and then exactly. just have to have people engage with their fears or their motivations or things like that you know five to get times those points mm -hmm. yeah oh, i like that <laughs> okay let's see what's chat shut up rc okay <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is the first one I read. Uh, I'm getting so many notes for my upcoming slasher game. I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm excited to be a guest on that. I haven't received my invitation yet, so I'll be waiting by my email. And that's uh, rare, sir. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to do something really weird, an idea I've always wanted to play but never gotten to do is a uh, an asymmetric game where mm. okay. normally there's one GM who has tons of power and you know, three to five players who have, you know, just whatever it says on their character sheet. You can always swap that and have the players each become a GM for the scenario and have the GM take the role of, or one of the players take the role of a hero character. Mm -hmm. So the players can just dish out the punishment in, you know, some nightmare world or sleep curse or alternate mm -hmm. dimension. Don't and tell that to my players. That sounds like players. a good way for me to get my comeuppance. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, you've got the one player who needs a way out and has mm -hmm. to play by the rules. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, ideally you can get the uh, 
the other players, the GMs, to argue amongst themselves because you're not powerful enough to counter them, but they encounter each other. And have them figure out, like, agree on what the escape or the the terms of the the curse are before you go in. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Poop says, and that is why he is the mutants and master daddy. <laughs> I like it. Um, all right. Well, this is good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I am, uh, you know, and w- this whole, I mean, buckle up, friends. You you have come to the wrong um, Mutants and Masterminds uh, live stream if you were hoping that this month would, you know, be just about something interesting. It's going to be more than interesting because it's going to be about Halloween all the time. <laughs> like, we are going to, mm-hmm. I mean, it is our Christmas. Um, it's only the third day of Halloween, folks. Like, pace yeah, yourselves. Yeah. Pace yourselves, right. That's right. Um, you can, oh, I like you can also, uh, talking about the, the hero point mechanics, you can also play around with the notion of how players earn hero points. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, normally it's about, you know, facing your complications and doing heroic stuff. But you can set up a scenario where the players all play each other's dark sides and are all about, you know, if you can tempt another player into giving into their dark side, you get a hero point, you know, uh, sort of scenario that rewards the the players to encourage each other to give into their fears or, you know, to, you know, indulge more deeply in the horror scenario if it's about corruption or those kinds of things. Uh, oh, Hannibal, you know. I like this. I- I'm making a villain that creates monsters out of shadows born from mm-hmm. nightmares. And he wants to basically unleash them on Halloween night when fear and night t- or nightmare activity would reach its zenith. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. People spend the whole month watching horror movies and scaring right? each other and going to haunted houses. <laughs> Oh, let's see. <laughs> or Anand says, in the real nightmare scenario, the entire party trapped on the Garfield dark ride at that one amusement park <laughs> on a Monday. Because they hate Mondays. Um, let's see. The trick isn't uh, the trick isn't isn't to not scar your players, but to give them scars they're proud to display. Yes. Yeah, I believe Alex has that embroidered on a sampler. Yeah. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Never written in a coffee cup. <laughs> right. Uh... A villain the same uh, you... cup that says I put poison in this on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As a villain, you turn people into what they fear. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and especially if you know said villain decides to use that power on the heroes, you know, friends and loved ones. You know what I'm terrified of? Money and wealth, and um, you know, uh, looking <laughs> young. Uh, all mm-hmm. that just terrifies me. Yeah, we can make that. Anything. We can make that scary. Oh yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I think Oscar Wilde wrote his book about that. Right. Yeah. Don't Benjamin Button me here. Um, let's see. Pope says, "Become <laughs> what you fear," but I don't want to become my father. Oh dear. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Just well, again, a, remember, we do don't do want that. to put the players in therapy. Yeah. Say, I mean, yeah. if you do that, you're going to end up with a lot of guys on the internet turned into black women. <gasps> <laughs> Who can play the fruit like... for some reason? Raymond, I really like what your your idea here is that turning the heroes into puppets or humanoids toys like G.I. Joe dolls or having them face the child who mm-hmm. simply wants to play can be a horror. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I remember some even like back in the day watching some of course they were reruns because I'm young, but it was the the original Star Trek where they were like or oh, no 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 no, I think it was actually the Twilight Zone where they were like little they like they were in the land oh, of giant right. aliens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're in yeah. the giant doll. Doll Not house. a dollhouse, but like a doll diorama almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. yeah. Creepy, creepy. Um, My Nether War heroes good. fought action figure versions of themselves. It might be fun to turn that on its head and make them mm-hmm. the action figures next time that comes up. Yep. Yeah, and that's pretty easy to do. We've got a, uh, in the Deluxe GM's Guide, we've got, you know, the idea of a scenario where you get turned into the tiny version of yourself and you use the exact same stat block, but, you know, you get to use. Mm-hmm. Giant rat stat blocks. And right, giant but everything cats. is giant. Yeah. Hey, our friend uh, Mon Frere Bodhi says, "Didn't you already say that fear can be a condition?" Mm-hmm. You can treat it as such, depending on how you define its effects. Yeah. 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 Whether that's dazed or impaired or 
paralyzed, depending on mm -hmm. how severe the fear yeah. is. If you want, you can all actually do it just like um, like hits work for toughness, where mm -hmm. every time you fail a will save, you take a minus one penalty to future will saves as your yeah. your your stress builds up and your your mental reserves kind of deplete. Yeah, it's it, that's reminiscent of our um, Cthulhu Awakens <clears throat> mechanic. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, yeah, I like that. That's really great. Oh, Dominic. you know what? I'm, I'm still sorry. I'm still stuck on the action figure thing. What if it was like a Sid from Toy Story <laughs> situation where you took the arms off of some of them and mixed them up and mixed, mixed and matched their powers? I think mm. that'd be cool. Yeah. Okay. Just a whole Mr. Potato Head scenario. Toys or... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Dominic had a good question about how he you did, work with yeah. all this with the fearless. Advantage. Fearless. It depends on how prevalent fearless is. If just one character has it, then they're just sort of the odd person out who's like, I don't understand why this is all so terrifying. Yeah. But they still have to deal with the scenario, you know, even if they're not scared of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even if they're... Well, I would first of all say, well, you know, something like a fear toxin that's built around affliction, that's mm -hmm. like a full fear effect, not just the environmental level of fear that comes with you mm -hmm. know, intimidation and whatnot. So, right. You probably give them a, a circumstance bonus to that uh, resistance check. Uh, but I wouldn't say they're immune, completely immune to all of a villain's powers because of a one point immunity. True. Uh, and it could be a really interesting say. scenario when the mm -hmm. character without fear experiences fear for the first time. Or it could just be a situation where they still hallucinate, but they're not terrified of things. They still have trouble distinguishing the fantasy from the reality. Right. Uh, uh, Hanover Fist. Oh, also, but, sorry. I was going to say, you can also just completely play it straight where they're the only ones who can see through all this, and they're the ones who have to deal with this villain while keeping yep. their friends from hurting each other or people around them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the classic mutants and masterminds thing is hey, this is an exception to your immunity. Here's a hero point. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. It's yeah. Weird. Hanover... The one who's immune to it is the big bad and all the others' visions. I don't know why that happened. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hand over fist says another option is affliction transformed, terrified, and then the GM can apply things as they see fit, not bound by a single not bound by single conditions. And David mm -hmm. Bush says you can define a fear effect, and then you can throw the hero into a skill challenge to get out of it. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Very smart. Um, listen, friends, I'm going to do something here, and I'm afraid I'm, I don't want it to play right away. I'm going to is going to let. Oh, oh, good, 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 good. Okay, it did not play right away. Um, so. <laughs> Are you sure? I, uh, uh, yeah, I, what, what, do you hear something? <laughs> or did you say good, 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 like I'm, a mad I'm hearing, scientist? I'm hearing the whispers, Troy. Was that what you meant to play? <laughs> That's right. Yes, I'm playing the inner voices today. Um, but, uh, well, you know, so I, I wanted to really um, uh, emphasize the, uh, the you know, no tricks, all, all treats, no tricks kind of thing here. Um, uh, before we wrap, like we've got about 10 minutes or so, um, uh, what are some final kind of thoughts? Because it's going to devolve from here. Um. <laughs> I mean, you can... <laughs> uh, other thoughts are playing with... Uh, somebody hit up on this. Oh, uh, Hannibal mm. hit up on this, where the instead of playing with the hero's fear, you can play with bystanders' fears, where you're trying to save them from each other as they, you know, can't distinguish reality from fantasy. Uh, mm -hmm. Another classic trope is uh, making all the bystanders see the hero as some kind of monster. Monster. So they flee oh, them right. And attack them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Also, we, you know, the, you know, innocent bystanders possessed by monsters or transformed into monsters. Oh, we just yes, a, right. We've got that in an astonishing adventure scenario. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Where every, everybody at a big party is transformed into fish people. Yep. Yeah, Alex, weren't you doing that to us in some regard? Weren't mm -hmm. there some people turning into something? Alex likes blue people for that. I mean, they were turning into dinosaur men, not not fish people. Right. Very That's dirty. Different. Nobody totally wants to be different. a fish person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being a fish person is disturbing and weird. Being a dinosaur right. person is sexy and modern. It really mm -hmm. is. A little drier. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so a oh, fear virus. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Very, very interesting. A handful of bumbling, non-threatening wannabe villains somehow one day body swaps with the yes, that's And it's more of a comedy than a horror scenario, mm -hmm. but... Sure, yeah. I mean, it depends on... It depends on how it goes. Depends on yeah. how you run it. 
I love that in the Justice League episode, the Flash is the bumbling idiot who got transferred into Lex Luthor's body. Yep. They just, it's a real they, fish out of water. They, they pointed out, wow, the Flash would be really dangerous if he was smart. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that so many times. Um, okay, so I'm going to play this video real quick. Now, here's the deal. This is a work in progress. This is I'm just trying to, you know, we've got some ramp up here, and this is for the, the Patreon um, uh, all, you know, all treats, no tricks. Mm -hmm. And um, again, you want to, to get there, you want to go to uh, mute, uh, mute uh, you want to go to patreon.com slash mutants, A N D mass. I'm just like mutant, mutant, mutant. Um, but uh, you can also get there through the uh, twilight accord, which is patreon.com slash twilight accord. And we'll drop some links and stuff, but uh, just tell me what you think of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. look at, take a look at this. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Thing. I mean, is it is it enticing? It's, it's the sound yeah. effects that really make it. You like that? Yeah. I mean, I just really wanted to, you know, um, that I feel like that's the gift that I bring to this group. We had not stop great intellect. Those pills. <laughs> 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 um, okay, I'll I'll work on it. Uh, more sound effects is what I'm hearing. More sound effects, it shall be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not to um, put too fine a point on it, but um, I really do. We're going to be playing Dominic and um, Oranon's uh, conversation that we had about their characters. Uh, again, I really appreciated it. It was a lot of fun. It, you know, they were sort of the, it was our experiment. We just kind of sat down mm -hmm. and we were talking about some stuff and we, and we whipped out a name, some art and all kinds of stuff. And it was very, <laughs> did you like that, David Bodie? Thank you. I, I'll take that as a, a seal of approval and all I need is yours. <laughs> Everyone else going to hate it, but if you love it, I do too. Um, <laughs> it's ready for the big screen. Um, and uh, you know the other thing that I keep forgetting about, and we're going to drop the link in here, but we have the pending, mm -hmm. the um, the bunch of things that we're doing on Kickstarter, book reprint thingy. Um, yeah. uh, what is the reprint extravaganza? Mm -hmm. Yes. We're yes. running out of superlatives. <laughs> it's getting close to the end of the year. <laughs> All of our superlatives. The uh, reprint ultimate edition. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Ultimate flavor Ultimately. blasted to the mount. Yes, flavor to the blasted mount <laughs> treacle. Uh, yes, right down oh, treacle. Wow, that that takes me back. Right, that's, that's a throwback. Yeah, I like it. Uh, it will reach around. I think I call it. Um, you know, so here's what I love about this. You know, we've done our job when the chat is continuing with the <laughs> ideas, and they are. I mean, like they're on fire. Um, why don't we do this, Alex? What have you got cooking? Well, uh, I just got back from the Pittsburgh Gaming Expo, so thank you, everybody oh, yeah. who came out to see me for that. Mm -hmm. I got to meet John Pelogic in person. He played my Freedom Week game and had a bunch of fun. Um, and I'll be at UConn this weekend running a couple of Mutants Masterminds games. And tonight, I will be doing some Modern Age stuff over on Untold Stories Project. I'll be I making saw some that. Exciting. Yeah. I'll be making some yeah. characters for our horror game on Wednesday. Now we've got a thing going on uh, as well for Halloweeny, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, our actual play is in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, that on is October amazing. the fourteenth. And if people want in on that, well, you got to be a patron because that's right? just how we're doing it. That's just a very special gig, and it's going to be fun, and it's going to be. I'm I'm really excited about it. We got some plans. We're working on some things behind the scenes, and it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. plans. Uh, Steve, what do you got cooking? Well, I just finished up a draft of another adventure for Twilight Accord, uh, so hey. we'll probably be making that available for playtest in the near future. Uh, moving on to the next adventure in that introductory series for that. And of course, we've got the, um, the freebie for uh, Twilight Accord up on the Patreon. That is uh, all about uh, what the uh, Accord calls the Procession of the Night Road. Uh, which is a, uh, a tradition uh, they have developed for keeping the gloom at bay um, that is uh, thematically appropriate for this time of the year. 
Sorry, friends, I did not mean to just keep dropping the same link over and over again. I uh, wanted you to go here. Um, but yeah, it's a great read. It's good stuff. And the Mutants and Masterminds stuff is great as well. That Nightmare Rider stat block, um, or as I type it, I guess, stat block. Um, mm -hmm. We'll go ahead and fix that in a moment. Um, stat block it, would be horror appropriate. Right. Stat block. I like, thank you. You saved me. You saved the day again. Um, Crystal, what have you got cooking? Uh, I am working on the Astonishing Adventures Assembled, which, mm. here you go, free sneak peek. Ooh, it's coming with extra maps for the adventures, uh, along with all the new art. So, that's all I can share, though. Mm. Nice. Um, right on. Okay, well, so I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get a link for the, uh, before we close out here, for the... Uh, Twilight Accords. You can start there too, and you get to see my other skeleton work. It's um, it's quite right. squeeze it. I got this map too, but nobody can see that one yet. Mm. Oh, you know they're gonna go. They're gonna go screen by screen. They're absolutely. They will do it, and then they'll find the treasure. Um, why okay, I'm everybody. Up the important map. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, listen, love y'all. Uh, mm. Really looking forward to October. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I am. Mm -hmm. uh, I am I'm significantly less furious than I was when we began. And that's you, know, you can end every day just a little less furious than I think. You know, Troy always feels better when he can take out his rage on us. That's right. That's True. right. I do indeed. Troy and the Skelly Boy is my new favorite indie band. Yeah, yeah. We're big in um mm -hmm. uh Enum Claw. The underworld? No, yeah. Yeah. Um, so friends, thank you so much. Everybody have a wonderful rest of your week. Uh, we will, yeah. And stay tuned for, you know, we'll share some links and news and all kinds of, uh, spooky Halloween goodness, uh, and get over to those. Here's the other thing. And I'm serious here. There are, there are like 3000 of you watching right now. I want you to stop what you're doing. Stop with your funny comments. Don't make me laugh and put a thumb right up. Whatever you are, like just thumb it up. Like give us the thumbs up. Mm -hmm. um, share it. Like share it. Uh, leave a comment. Um, do all the things that help the algorithm know that you know that you care. Um, it's very important. Out. The algorithm knows that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, it, it helps us out quite a bit, especially over on uh, YouTube's. And uh, we you know we need to build. We just are running a little slower because we've had that. YouTube for like I think 20 years and we just really haven't invested the time until now and so we're, we're making some waves here um, I I don't think that the thumbs up in the chat actually do a thing but I mean I think it's a, it's a good first start <laughs> uh, and with that everybody uh, we will uh, see you uh, we were looking at Thursday we might move things around just depending upon uh, how folks are feeling we'll keep you apprised uh, but don't be surprised if it's uh, if you see us doing something, you know, spooky, who knows? Um, mm. Take care, everyone. Have a great week. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>